I think One Piece has some very underrated duos. Like honestly, when you think about the duos in One Piece, they're great. And I also want you guys to view duos from the perspective of not just fighting together or working together, but more so how important they are to the story and how much their stories intertwine for it to fit within the narrative. That's a lot to say a little but regardless one piece has some amazing duos that bounce off of each other there may be some duos better but garp and roger they're close to the top of the list what makes this interesting and the point of this video is just to talk about garp and roger and how i feel like they're the same but they're not but they're on two separate sides obviously i'm always intrigued when people talk about their relationship either outside of the story, you know, fans, or whatever, but also inside of the story. When they talk about Garp and Roger and that dynamic that they had. Of course, based on what we know, because we're the fans, we've seen different vantage points in the story, but within the story and the people's perspective, they view them as enemies. When in actuality, it seems like they were somewhat friends. Bare minimum, they respected each other. When we talk about Garp as a character, I made a video saying that Garp is the best character in One Piece. For a long time, I didn't view it that way because emotionally and just personally, I hated Garp. I felt like Garp was a fool for choosing his job over his family. But when you take a step back and you, you think about how much was at stake and how much he tried to instill the marine life into Ace and Luffy, at some point you kind of have to hold Ace accountable. So I kind of backed off of that where I realized that Garp, even though I would have made a different decision, he didn't necessarily make the wrong decision. I think for Garp, he acknowledges and he understands what it means to the world, the epithet or the person, Garp the hero. Because if Garp the hero at that point betrayed the marines a lot of things would fall into peril no matter what marineford was the end of an era but if garp as well embarrassed the marines in that way things may be viewed a lot differently from the perspective of pirates and even the revolutionaries for garp you could say he has a horse in that race because his legitimate well from what we know son is the leader of the revolutionaries but i think garp had so much weighing on his shoulders that it was a really tough decision and now it's more understandable there are some people who still feel that way that garp should have definitely picked ace over the marines but we have to understand that garp has been a part of the marines for a long time going through all the changes his disdain of the celestial dragons declining admiral promotions to move around to be able to make a better or positive impact in this I don't know if you want to call it terrible organization or rather a corrupt organization while being a D, right? So Garp is an anomaly in many ways. And I think Roger is the same. Roger isn't viewed as a great character by a lot of people in One Piece. And I think part of the reason is because we don't know a lot about Roger. We know what the story wants us to know, right? For instance, when we went to the flashback with Odin, there's a moment where Roger's holding Odin's baby and really mentioned something about, oh, this reminds us of old times. And everyone just jumped to speculation. What does this mean? Some people even made babysitting theories like did they have a pirate ship in which they used to babysit kids I, I'm, I'm, I'm joking nobody did nope <laughs> I'm, jo <laughs> I'm joking i hope nobody did that but people were speculating that roger probably had kids before or they came across kids at some point and they used to have kids on a ship and more than likely was shanks and buggy but i don't think we're exactly sure when shanks and buggy joined the crew but regardless it led to so much speculation because there's a lot about roger we don't know we don't know about his lineage we're not sure about his motivations all we know is that roger was inquisitive he wanted to find a one piece without knowing what the one piece was so was this instilled in him at birth did he have someone that he looked up to i mean more than likely but we still don't know that honestly we don't know the same for garp but we know a lot more than we do for roger but i think roger is a really interesting character for several reasons first off he's an anomaly like garp in which he's a trailblazer garp is a d and he is viewed as the hero of the marines do you understand how much that burns the celestial dragons or people that despise the D's, that when you think of the Marines, the person or the face of the Marines, maybe not right now, or still could be for a lot of people, you think of Garp the hero, Monkey D Garp, an anomaly, a trailblazer. And for Roger, obviously he's the same. Roger was not just content with being a pirate. He wanted to accomplish something. He wanted to find something meaningful. And he was chasing something without even knowing what he was chasing. But he had a feeling and he had a mentality. And he accomplished most of what he was trying to do. The issue here comes in when you think about Roger finding the One Piece and not being in a position to do anything with it. Of course, we know he was sick. So the Roger Pirates were towards the end of their journey. But for the most part, Roger is the most accomplished pirate we have in a story and Luffy is on his way. But for Garp and Roger together, and having these two anomalies intersect more times than one, not just within the story and them being pirate and marine, but also in the future, how much impact them meeting and having a relationship had on the outcome of the world. I think there's some beauty in it though, that Garp, as dedicated as he is, to the Marines. We saw it at Marineford. Like he literally chose his job over his blood. 
flesh and blood. Yeah, technically he's not his blood, but you couldn't be any closer, right? He literally raised him. Well, Jadon did, but you catch my drift. And he chose the Marines. He chose the organization. As dedicated as Garp is, there's still a limit for him in which he understands when to do the right thing. And that couldn't have been more obvious when it comes to Ace and Garp saving Ace and raising him. But when I think about Garp and Roger, other than Luffy and Ace and their relationship, Garp and his relationship with Roger, the fan theories about how strong Garp is, how strong Roger is, the nitpicking in regards to the translations, people tried to discern whether or not Garp was almost killed by Roger, was Roger almost killed by Garp, the semantics of that to justify who is stronger, which in actuality doesn't matter, they're both top tiers, even though I think Roger is stronger than Garp, but whatever, what I think about is God's Valley, and that moment in which, even though Garp being a trailblazer, being someone who had a moral compass, being someone that hates the Celestial Dragons, still took it upon himself to ally with Gold Roger to take down Roxy Zebek. This is really significant because I mentioned Garp being an anomaly. I mentioned Roger being an anomaly. Zebek was an anomaly as well. See, the thing is Zebek was a pirate, but I think Zebek should also be viewed as a revolutionary. What Zebek managed to do was special. We'll never see something like that again. Maybe within the Star Heights, but we have to look at what Zebek did. And even Luffy, I don't think can reach the heights that he did in regards to what he accomplished. Not talking about the One Piece. I'm talking about specifically Zebek being able to subjugate individuals who went on to be at the top of the pirate world. Beneath him, he had Shiki, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, and there's speculation that Blackbeard was influenced by him. So even if we leave out Blackbeard, that's not confirmed, even though his ship is called the Saber of Zebek. Even if we leave him out, three of his subordinates went on to be Yonko, in the One Piece world. And Whitebeard went on to be the strongest man in the One Piece world. That is unheard of. Of course, the back was a radicalist. He wanted to kill the Celestial Dragons. He wanted to be on top of the world, not just the pirate world, the world period. Overthrowing the world government, being the king of it all, lofty goals. But was he wrong? If Zebek is in charge and everything, are things better? Hard to say. When you put people like that in control, normally they become tyrants. But are things better now with the Celestial Dragons, Imsama, and even the world government in charge? Mm, things are kind of still messed up. But not to get too off topic, the point is he's a trailblazer. So Garp and Roger basically came together to take down someone that was just like them doing something that was unexpected, different, and never to be done before. As much as we talk about it, it is an underrated feat. Because Garp, again, knowing his moral compass, Roger and what he stood for as far as being a pirate, we relate him to Luffy in regards to personality, where it's all about the adventure and accomplishment. In regards to the journey, not more so statistics and accolades, they came together. They understood that what Zebek presented was greater than anything they could face against each other. That is special. That is really special that these two giants could come together and realize that this is an enemy that they have to overcome. That's why a lot of people speculate that Smoker could be Luffy's Garp. Some people say Kobe. And I think that tells something about someone. When you're willing to put whatever you have going on with someone aside for the greater good. And I think that's why Garp went on to respect Roger so much because as a pirate, even Roger understood Zebek had to be taken out. He was too powerful, too strong, and too radical. And in a way, we see a bit of that in Luffy and Smoker, where Smoker at times has let Luffy live. Luffy at times has let Smoker live, in which it's developed a sign of respect, whereas they know, yes, we're on opposite sides. We're continuously going to go at each other. But when the fate of the world is on the line, or when something bigger is at stake, we can put our differences aside and work together. I think it's a beautifully crafted relationship. Again, Garp, the top of the marine world, Roger, the top of the pirate world, being somewhat respectable friends is so unexpected, but in a way, you expect it. I've just been thinking about these two all day and just how much the decisions they made had an impact on the One Piece world today. Either through influence because Garp, you know, he has a bunch of Marines that look up to him and Roger, obviously he started the Great Pirate Era. They're two goats, two of the greatest of all time, just based off of the things they accomplished and also through the way they've lived. Just amazing characters in general. Roger will get some more respect the more we find out about him. Garp already gets his respect. He probably deserves a bit more, but two legends. And this is almost like a homage video. Just acknowledging that these two people are great individuals in the history of One Piece that set us on a path 
that could possibly lead to a more promising future. Because Garp has his reasons and Roger has his reasons. They both make sense for each other, but at the end, what will be the outcome? But guys, give me your thoughts. How do you feel about Garp and Roger and their relationship? Give me your thoughts on the decisions they made. Are there things you think they should have done a bit differently? Let me know below. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps me out a lot. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.